I'm in the studio at the Dubai World Trade Center with Dr. Hamadoun Toure, Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union, as we head into week two of the Wicket 12 conference. Hello, Dr. Toure. Hello, good afternoon. We're at the halfway point of Wicket 12. Can you tell us how the event is going and what are your feelings about the possible outcomes? Well, Sarah, the halfway mark in a major conference like this is always important. It is a critical point. People want to know how much progress has been made. And there is also a tendency to prejudge the outcomes. But we all know that the final days are the most important ones and that very often it is in the very last hours of important negotiations that the most significant breakthroughs are made. So I'm expecting to see more progress in the second week than we have had uh, in the first. Uh, even though we have had some clear success already. For example, in the provision that on the ITRs to prioritize fiber optic cable access to landlocked developing countries and small island developing states. I'm also encouraged by the discussions which have uh, been ongoing through this weekend concerning accessibility, remembering that there are at least 650 million people worldwide suffering from some sort of disability today, and that each and every one of them, each and every one of them, has just as much right as you and I to have access to the full benefits of communications. I think that's a very important point to remember. But what about some of the more contentious issues which are still out there on the table? Well, one of the very important things about ITU's work is that we are open to discuss any issue which member states want to bring to the table. On the great majority of those issues, members are able to come to an agreement through consensus in the true spirit of ITU. Although we can, this can take some time, especially where opening positions are very divergent. And we have seen this here in Dubai. But I'm confident that we will find consensus, not least because we always have done that in the past. This is in the ITU, and this is the ITU way. And it's worth pointing out that we have found consensus in the past on issues which in many ways have been more contentious than those we are addressing today. Sometimes, of course, the consensus is to drop certain proposals altogether or to modify hardline positions, but that is the nature of consensus. But let's not forget that we are here together for the common good and we all have the same essential goal, which is to ensure that we bring the benefits of communications to the 700 million people or so who still don't have mobile phone network coverage. And even more importantly, the 4.5 billion people who are not yet online. Thank you, Secretary General. Finally, could I ask how would you respond to concerns that have been raised that as a member state conference, Wicket 12 does not reflect the 21st century need for a more multi-stakeholder engagement. Yeah, that is a very good question. I'm glad you brought it up. In fact, ITU is a very special organization as a UN agency having both public and private sector members with 193 member states, of course, but there are also over 700 other members ranging from industry players to academia to civil society organizations such as internet society. And we are very pleased that the documents and proceedings of this particular meeting have been made widely available as possible. This is a treaty making conference with live webcast and of the, of the main sessions and archives, transcripts available to the uh, public, all including the daily media briefings. So we have also opened up access to the conference documents and before the event we held a public online consultation we, we shouldn't forget also that member states are free to choose the members of their delegations and that a good number have taken this opportunity to include not just industry and legal and technical experts in their delegations 
but also civil society organizations. I myself have been making a concerted effort to personally engage with all stakeholder groups. It is very important to us that all voices are heard. And we are pleased to be able to say that this has been the most transparent, accessible and multi-stakeholder treaty making conference to date. This is not to say that uh, in future we could not do better. And indeed, I would encourage our membership to reach out to all stakeholders at future ITU events, such as the plenipotentiary conferences, where I hope to see even wider multi-stakeholder representation in the halls. Dr. Ture, thank you very much indeed for taking some time out of your schedule to join us here this afternoon and very best of luck with the week ahead. Thank you.